Hi, welcome to Father of Games. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial of how to play Native Valir. For a more in-depth tutorial, click on the link in the description below, but otherwise let's take a quick look at how to play. After a millennia of peace, the arch enemy of the dwarves, the dragon Fafnir has returned, and an army must be created to defeat him. Native Valir will have two to five players bidding on dwarves from taverns in hopes to create the bravest army and be given the honor of fighting the dragon and bringing peace to the dwarven kingdom once again. Each player receives a kingdom map board, one of each of the five basic coins, and a starting gem. The gems used depend on the player count, and they are put at the top of each player's board. If playing with less than five players, remove all cards from the H1 and H2 decks that have this five symbol. Place all distinction and hero cards in the card trays and put the assembled treasury beside it, and be sure to remove two, seven, nine, and 11 value coins if playing with less than 4 players. Lastly, put out the 3 taverns in ascending order and from the age 1 deck, deal out the same number of dwarves as players at each tavern and place the gem trade markers under each tavern here. In Native Valir, players are bidding on dwarves at each tavern to try to recruit them to their army. Players choose a coin to put face down on each tavern symbol on their board and the remaining two coins are placed at the bottom of their board to form their pouch. When all players have done this, they simultaneously flip the coin on top of the Laughing Goblin Tavern and the player with the highest value coin gets first choice at a dwarf from that tavern to add to their army. Then the player with the second highest coin chooses from one of the remaining dwarves at that tavern and so on until all dwarves have been recruited. If players tie with the same value coin, then the player who has the highest value gem on their board gets first pick between them and before moving on to the next tavern, the highest and lowest value gems are swapped between any players who tied. When the first tavern is empty, players flip the coins they place on the Dancing Dragon Tavern next and again the player with the highest value coin gets first choice at a dwarf to add to their army and then the next highest and so on. Play continues this way until all three taverns are empty. At that point, dwarves are dealt out again and again until the age 1 deck is depleted. If at any point a player plays their zero value coin at a tavern, then the two coins in their pouch are flipped and a coin from the treasury equal to the sum will replace the higher value coin they had in their pouch. Red coins are returned to the box when replaced and gold coins return back to the treasury. Whenever a player has one of each type of dwarf in their army, they have created a rank line, and if they have more rank lines than heroes, then a new hero can be recruited, adding bonuses to their army. Neutral colored heroes are placed in that player's command zone, and the other heroes are placed in the army that matches their color, potentially creating another new rank line, in which case another hero would be recruited. When age 1 is over, distinctions are awarded by the king for each player who has the majority of ranks for each type of dwarf in their army. After that, the H2 cards are dealt out at each tavern and players will be bidding on them in the same manner with the highest value coin getting first pick at a tavern until the H2 deck is depleted. At that point, the game is over and scores are added up. Green hunters add a number of points equal to the number in the green row on the player board. And the purple blacksmiths are added up using the points listed in the purple row. Blue explorers score points by adding the number in all the ranks together. Red Warriors score points by adding the number in their ranks together and also the player who finishes the game with the most Warrior ranks gets to add their highest value coin to their score. The Orange Miners score points by adding the number in all their ranks together and multiplying that by the number of minor ranks you have. The sum of each player's 5 coins is added to their score as well. And finally, if any player was awarded the special gem from the Crown Jeweler distinction, then they score an additional 3 points as shown. When all scores are added up, the player with the highest bravery score gets to face the dragon, and in the case of a tie, then both players get to face the dragon together. And that's how you play Nita Valir. If you want to know what I think of the game, I've linked a review in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.